Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I believe that tonight is going to be a night of miracles. I believe that tonight is going to be a night of hope. And it's going to be a night of liberty. That we're going to walk out of this door, so not the way that we came in. You're going to walk out knowing that God loves you, that he's not mad at you, that he is for you, that he has a plan for your life, no matter what you don't have been. Because if you are a child, if you're a son or a daughter of God, he loves you unconditionally. Isn't it something that sometimes it's so hard to believe? Like in, it's easy to believe that he loves us unconditionally when we are good, right? When everything is good, we have no problems, your marriage is up, your children are up, your finances are up. Everything looks like we're going up, right? And then you God loves me. Oh, how much do I am so loved. He's favorite. And, but then all of a sudden, things start crashing down. And then you start questioning, does he really love me? Is he really going to come through for me? And so we want to, tonight we're going to crush all those lies and we're going to, and we're going to finish with, uh, with roots. I, I thought this, this series should be, it's, 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 it should be just taking one, one, um, one root at a time, one weed at a time. But I believe that if we learn to do this, you learn to conquer all things that will come your way. And we try to steal the goodness and the purpose that God has for your life. So I'm going to just recap re really quick, um. Uh, let us go to Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so this is what it says. As therefore you have, been, you have received the Christ, even Jesus our Lord, live and act in vital union with him, having the roots of your being firmly planted in him. And continually building yourself up in him. And always being increasingly confirmed in the faith as you were taught it. And abounding in it in thanksgiving. This is having the roots of your being, our being. Who's our being? We, 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 are, we are not just the spirit, we are a soul and we have a body. And then I believe that many times, you know, the problem is that the moment, well, it's not the problem. I can't say it's the problem. What happens is when we, when we come to Jesus and we receive him as a Lord and Savior, my spirit and his spirit connect and we become one with him. So now our spirit is reborn and we're going to heaven and we're like, yay. But then it's a time of renewal because now we are new creations. We are new in Christ. We are in a new kingdom. Before we used to live and believe that we were in the kingdom of darkness because that's where we were. Everybody's born in sin. But God says that he sent his only son to die for you and me. So whenever you receive him, he forgives us of all of our sins. He takes all of our infirmities, all of our sickness, all of our sorrows. And then on top of that, we get the golden ticket. What's the golden ticket? You're like going to heaven. No, it's your inheritance on this earth. It's your inheritance. We have an inheritance on this earth. You and I have an inheritance. You know, I, I have a friend of mine that her mom is very like wealthy people. Have you ever met wealthy people that for their birthdays they get like, and I'm like you get a, a, I'm talking about like you getting the top of the line a Ferrari. That's for your birthday. And if it was for Mother's Day, well, you get in a house, right? And you're like, dang, I was like, used to think like, yeah, what am I going to get, uh, you know, what are they going to give me? You know, what's my inheritance in my family, you know? And, but we're not in that family. God is talking about his family, the inheritance that we have with him. And the only way to receive the inheritance is someone has to die, right? So Jesus had to die, and he says, it is better for me to go to my father so you can inherit what I have given you. So you can have it on this earth. It's not it, as it is. We have to live as it is in heaven. We have to live it on this earth. So that means it's for our now here. And I believe that God wants to open your eyes. He wants to open your minds. He wants to open your hearts. And I want you to, I want you to be open-minded. I want you tonight to examine yourself. 
to be brutal with yourself because we're brutal with others. Have you noticed that we're so good, you even call it discernment? And it's called brutality, but we call it discernment, right? Oh, I, I can read that brother. I can read that sister. They're going through this and that, and you're so good at uh, thinking of what they're going through. But when it comes to you, it's hard to see if we are good or right with God, if we're wrong. And so I want us to expose all those lies. And remember last week I said one of the, one of the answers, I call it the antidote, because when we have bitterness, it's literally poison. It says he poisons us. And we know the bitterness, and I'm not going to go, if you didn't listen to this message, you have to go listen to the other two parts. But it comes from hurt. It comes from so many things. And so all of a sudden, I'm going to tell you that you can be bitter and not know it. Really, you, you can become bitter little by little and not knowing. And by the time someone points it out that there is some, something is off with you, Oh, that's when you pull out your little knife, right? If you're very trained very well, you pull out, you pull out your, your butter knife. You know, because it's going to hurt you, but, you know, it's going to be like a little, you know, it still gets, you're still going to get cut. If not, you're shanker for some of us, right? <laughs> but we don't realize when we have become bitter. I remember, like, I think on my part one, I told you my, my story about you know, when I got bit by the scorpion, right? My friend Patty was like, don't tell them that story. They're, gonna go, they're not going to want to go to Oaxaca. Well, the Bible said that we are going to, to trample over scorpions, literally, right? But the first thing that when you're bitten by, by a spider or whatever venomous uh, insect, the first thing that goes is your vision. It's, it's, you start to see blurry. It's so blurry. And believe me, because I was in, I had all the symptoms, like, what is this? Like, who, like, you can't see. You can't really see. And so sometimes you are seeing through the lenses of that bitterness. You are, you're seeing through that lenses of that hurt. And I believe, like, last week I told you that one of the answers, right, one of the antidote is to be the salt of the earth, right? And if you were here, who was here last week? And who was not here last week? Raise your hand so you can tell you, go, go listen to the, uh, to the message. Because then it's not going to make sense to you. I'm just going to go on key number two. Right? So God has called us to be the salt of the earth. And we know that bitterness trumps, uh, salt trumps bitterness. And not trump our president. I mean, like, literally. <laughs> salt, using salt. And I believe that, that we are the answer. We are the answer for the world right now. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt. Our, our, our entire world, our country is divided because, because we are all hurt, all hurt. Churches are divided. Why? Because we are offended. We are hurt. Someone said something. So, but you and I, we, you and I carry the answer. You and I carry, carry what needs to be done so you and I can be healed, but it needs to start with us. So the second key to becoming and to freeing yourself from bitterness is peace. You're like, what? Oh, yeah, peace, my friends. That root of bitterness will lead you to hopelessness. If you find yourself hopeless today, it's because you have allowed so many things already in your heart without knowing. Because in this heart, we're going we're gonna to encounter so many things. It's when bitterness is a fight that you're never going to win. Because have you ever been bitter? Well, I have. I'm going to admit it. I have, and not just one time. A couple of times. Okay, several times. And I'm not talking about being bitter before Jesus Christ. I'm talking me being a daughter of the Most High God and allowing bitterness in my heart. And you, not, you don't even know it. But I'm going to tell you what it does. It's, 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 it's a fight that you can never win. You want people because when you when you have your your, your vision is blurry, all you th all you can see is the other person because it comes from a hurt. It comes from pain. And so all you can see is it's it's magnified because you already have this huge wound in your heart in your soul that everything that they do is magnified. 
Maybe they're speaking to you at a level two, but you're here at level 20. You already added something. Maybe they, they, they try to uh, come to you and talk to you, but you don't want nothing to do with them because they know they hurt you. But you feel great about it. You feel, you know, no, I'm doing good. I'm, not, I, I, I'm, I'm taking care of my heart. I know that I am good. And all that has to do, all of that bitterness, hurt, all of that hurt will lead you to unforgiveness, and unforgiveness will lead you to bitterness. So sometimes we're taking care of, of like a plan, right? We said the bitterness is something that grows. It's something that we cultivate. It's not something that, oh, the devil put it in my heart. No one put it in your heart. You planted the seeds. I planted the seeds. What are those seeds? The seeds of disappointment? The seeds of offense? The seeds of, of feeling left out? You name it. You name your seed. What is it that you've been watering? Because we are to, we cultivate that, the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit has nothing to do with hatred, has nothing to do with offenses, has nothing to do with revivory, has nothing to do with division, has nothing to do with slander, has nothing to do with gossip, has nothing to do with bad thoughts. The fruit of the spirit has to do with love, long suffering. You name it, we know it by heart. Some people have it tatted all out here and here, and they have them all. But we don't practice. We don't cultivate it. We, we don't like to get dirty. My daughter and I are still waiting for the, for the uh, garden that we promised that we were going to do when she was seven years old. We said, we're going to plant a garden. And we bought the seeds and everything and realized that we needed to deal with dirt and we didn't like it. And this is a true story, right? We went out and we're like, even, oh, do we have to touch the, the dirt? Oh, oh, no. And then our nails. So the seeds, they died. Because a seed without being planted, it's nothing. Right? You need to plant it. So if you ever get to be bitter, it's because you took the time to nurture it. You took the time to water it. You took the time to plant it. So, and if we're growing in the things of God, that means I took the time in developing the character of God. I took the time to, to uh, plant in my heart the fruit of the Spirit, right? In the fruit of the Spirit, there's not, it, there's not all the fruit. It's one fruit. So, it's all this amazing fruit in, in one. And so, we, you and I, are responsible in how our heart is doing. You and I are responsible of how we feel about others. Another thing that you will feel if you allow bitterness is that you want people, you want to change people so bad. And you are miserable because they are not changing. You know, my friends, they might never change. Because if you're bitter, I think the one that needs to change is us. But we're waiting for them. No, until I see, I, I need to see some sign that they're changing. You might never see a, a sign. You might, never, you might never even have someone who offended you or literally offended you, or, or whether intentional or not. But if someone intentionally offended you or hurt you, you might be waiting for them to come to you and to tell you, please forgive me. You might never hear it. And you're like, if I hear it, then, I, then I'm going to start dealing with myself. No, 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 no. You don't have to hear it because this is for you. This is so you can walk in, in fullness, that you can walk in godliness, so you can walk in holiness, and that we can see God. Because it says that without holiness, we won't see God, right? It's being consecrated to him. Without godliness, it, that means we exercise in what God, the character of God, unless we walk in those things, we will never see God. And in the same verse, it says, lest you again fall into bitterness because if we don't welcome that we don't we don't we don't have grace have you ever met people black and white and i'm talking about the things of god like no black and white nope you did this to me that's uh, that's ungodly i will never i will never talk to you again that you should have never done it you should have thought about it your intentions were wrong and we go into all these conversations and all of a sudden all those seeds all those weeds are being planted in our hearts and that's what you will harvest and you know what i believe that jesus is coming soon with all of my heart i know that he's coming soon and i'm like this church every seed should be filled 
But you know what? Tonight wasn't a good night because what do we rather do, right? You know, I need to see the Doyers, right? <laughs> I want to see the Doyers. I need to see the Dodgers win. You know, that, no, I'm not going to say it because I'm not a fan, but I know you guys are. But you know their pattern, right? They're winners. But what I'm saying is, so you don't get offended because you love them, and I love them because you love them. But they'd rather stay there. Why not just go watch it later? And I'm not saying, oh, my gosh, you know, there is no fun in Jesus. No, that's not what I'm talking about. No, it's why, who are you living for? What is your truth? What, what's your truth? What the, what's the truth that we're walking in? Are, are we really dealing with ourselves or are we always constantly, you know, Pointing everything, fingers always, your fingers always out, your eyes are always out because you're always watching for everybody else but you. And I said, pursue God, pursue peace. And we'll go back to that one. Hebrews 12, we already read it, but pursue peace. That's key number two, pursue peace. You know the word pursue means? It means to seek after eagerly. It means to press on, to reach a goal, to make a run to put a fight, you need to pursue peace at all costs. It says you pursue it. God never called us to be peacekeepers. He said you, you are to be a peacemaker. We make peace. So that means you pursue it. You pursue those people. You release them to God. What I learned after all my time with the Lord, I learned that God is not a destroyer of life. He's a giver of life. You need to know that God has never sent anything into your life to destroy you, to kill you, to, to punish you. No, he took the punish you that you and I deserve. He took it upon himself. So we don't have to live like that. So we don't have to feel he's punishing me. No, he will correct you, but he will not punish you because his son took, took the punishment. So don't ever feel like, oh, he's punishing me right now. No, no, no. Maybe he's pruning you. And we all need pruning. There are seasons of pruning. And I think when it comes to bitterness, what we do is we just take care of, of the leaves. Like, you know, let's, let's say this is, I wanted to paint the flowers black, but, you know, I try. Can you see a few of my Sharpies? But I'm going to tell you what happens. This is what we do. We pray for the symptoms. Well, I already told you the symptoms, right? You're super sensitive. Everything, everything hurts you. If someone kind of gives you a, a look that is not too good or you thought that they gave you a look, it hurts you. You're like, I think I was ignored. I think she, she ignored me. And I'm not just talking about church wherever. This could be in marriage, in family, at your work, anywhere. You be, you know what? I think they they. That, that look, I recognize that look. That look is, this, this person is dissing me. This person is, is ignoring me. This person doesn't respect me. So what do we do? Because we're so, such a good Christians, right? So we go to God and we just, we just pray for that. You know, we, we're going to be nice. It's okay we say to ourselves. Like, it doesn't matter what this person is doing. I'm just going to be nice to them. And so when you see them, you're like, you're just streaming the leaves, you know. You know, when you, you see them and you want to choke them, right? But you're like, you see them and you're like, oh, good to see you. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to my boss. He gets on my nerves. I'm like, oh, look what I brought you. I brought you coffee. And then you see your friend that really did you wrong. And then you're like, oh, but because I'm a Christian. So good. Hey, let's have coffee next week. And then at work, you're like, may I help you? You, you don't want to help them. They should be doing their work. You know, they should have be, be able to take their responsibility, da, da, da. But you're going to help them with a smile because you're a Christian, right? And then you go to your church and there's that person that you don't like, right? And then you're like, oh, so good to see your brother and sister. May the Lord bless you. You even give them that sanctification. 
And so, and so that's what you, you say, all these nice things, all these nice things. And so we're feeling great because you know what? Hey, I'm just taking care of the leaves. I'm praying that these leaves, Lord, make me nice. I want to be a nice person. I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I feel, you know, deal with them because, it, you know, you know how they are. These people are wicked, Lord. You know they're wicked. You know they don't probably don't read the Bible, Lord. So I'm praying for them, Father God. Send them the police if you have to. You know, send them people to, like, rescue them from hell, Father God. And thank you for making me such a wonderful person that I walk in your spirit, Lord. I am such a woman, a man of God. I, I'm taking care of my heart. And then you see your, you know, I did good. I've been doing good. But you so, but see, if you want to get rid of bitterness, you need to go to the root. He never said, pray for the leaves. Think about Jesus. Remember that when Jesus was passing by, by the wayside, and he saw the tree, the fig tree? And I'm going to, let us go there, and this is my closing. Mark 11, 12, 14, it says, now the next day when they have come out from Bethany, he was hungry. This is Jesus. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see it. Perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Sometimes we are nothing but leaves. We are to bear fruit. We look good. We sound good. We talk good. We have learned to play a part. But there is no fruit. And this and this verse always bothered me. But then, I, you know, I'm a researcher, right? So I'm going to tell you what happened. So he says, but nothing, he, he didn't find nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs, right? In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And I was like, Jesus, that's pretty strong. It's not the season of, of, of figs. So why are you expecting to have fruit? But if you ever go to, go to a Persian place and, and they have these amazing uh, almonds and, and, this, uh, and figs, and they, they eat them sometimes green. So it says that before they, the season of harvesting come, when the first leaves are coming out, there is fruit. It's not the season, but you're supposed to be found with fruit. It's not the season, but you always have fruit. And as you study that, so you always, people pass by and they're, they're green, but you can eat them. And so I thought, hey, you know, you're expecting already to know. He said there should be some fruit. There should be something, something budding should be coming out of it. And it, he cursed the tree from the root. And if we jump into verse 20, it says, now in the morning at the spice fly, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, from the roots. It wasn't just, he says that, you know, no one will eat from, from you again. No, the whole tree was dead. And so what does that have to do? It's, that means that you and I, it's painful, but we, we and I need to dig in. And if I want bitterness to get out of my heart, you see how hard it is to get just little, a little root out of it? It takes work. And it's already making me upset. I'm not going to use the word that I used the first time on roots. But if you remember you, that's what I'm feeling. Look it. It's hard. So I have to, what do I have to do? I, I have to dig in. I'm going to make a mess, okay, guys? I have to dig in. And I have to, like, really go by that. I'm going to pull it out. Look, the roots are all the way at the bottom. All this is roots. And so God is saying, what is God saying to you? He says, it was a lesson to the, it was a lesson to the, uh, to his disciples. It was a lesson for you and I. He says, just don't, don't take care of the symptoms. We only take care of our symptoms. Jesus said, he said to this, uh, when Peter was like, wow, he was so like, what? It's dead? So Jesus answers it to them, have faith in God. For as surely I say to you that whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast out into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. We can have whatever we say. 
there is power in our words. There is such power in, in, in the Bible says that there is life and death in what? In the power of our tongue. And then we wonder why we're broke, right? Because we're talking to ourselves. We're constantly speaking. We're cursing ourselves. You know, I'm an idiot. You know, I, I, I never did anything with my life. I can never be creative. I can never understand this. I don't know how to understand it. And without knowing, we're cursing ourselves. And those, and those words are taking root in our hearts. And then God is trying to tell, hey, you were created in my image. I have created you for great things. I am the creator. That means that you are creator. There's nothing impossible for me. So there should be nothing impossible for you if you just believe. But we constantly are planting and planting seeds. And then it's interesting because the, uh, oh, okay, the, uh, in verse 25, it says this. And whenever you stand praying, from here he went into, to, hey, I cursed the tree. This is what you need to do. Then he goes into, if you have faith and believe in whatever you say, it should be done. You can move this mountain from this side to the other one. And then he goes on verse 25, it says, in whatever, and whenever you stand praying. Oh, you know, you're like, I don't, I don't need to do that because I pray kneeling down. I pray in the bed. No, it means whenever you pray. If you have anything against anyone, anything, if you have anything against anyone. It doesn't say if anyone has things against you. No, it says if you. He points it back on you because it's a personal thing. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you, forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Do you know why our prayers are not being answered? Because we have so much unforgiveness. Because we're too hurt, we're too offended. And I'm going to tell you a few seats. So you can, if you recognize some of the seeds, you need, you need to already go dig and dig deep and take them out. Holding offenses, those are seeds of bitterness. You held long grudges. You have accumulated disappointments. Not one, you remember all your disappointments. You have secret resentments. There's some of us here sitting that you have secret resentments that you are seething at night thinking about what this person has done to you and you will never say it because you're a Christian and that will be wrong. No, it is wrong that you have a secret resentment towards someone else. Maybe a careless remark or those seeds will lead you, I'm going to tell you, those seeds will lead you to a deeper unforgiveness. And when unforgiveness gets a hold of your soul, it's really hard to pull, to pull the root. It's really hard. Is it impossible? No, but it is hard. Because first of all, you have to, you have to admit to yourself, you know what? I do have a, a lot of, I have planted a lot of those seeds in my heart. Some people experience indigestion, like, you know, like you get a lot of stomach things. You know why? Because you're carrying a lot of junk in your heart. I'm going to tell you how to do it, and, and I'm closing with this. You need to examine yourself. Let's take offense. It's, it's, this is how you do it. Because bitterness is poison. And the fruit, you see all these little, pretend these are fruits. It's, it, it will lead you to hatred, to selfishness, to revenge. And eventually violence. That's what it does. And that's why it's so hard to pull it out. To, to kill it. But the Lord says, have faith. Have faith. You can, you can say it. You can speak it. You can declare it. So how do you do it? You take the reaction of offense. And this is how you examine your, your problem. And you examine yourself. So the offense, you have, you're offended. Well, examine yourself. Why did it hurt me? You should be writing this down to examine yourself. Why did it hurt me? Why has this wounded me? Why has this upset me? Is it, is it because I feel disrespected? Is it because I feel devalued? Is it because I feel dismissed? Is it because I feel ignored? Or is it because, what is that feeling? 
and then, and then you need to go to the root of it. Maybe there is a root of unforgiveness, that you've always been an unforgiving person, but now you're in Christ and we are to forgive people. And forgiveness is a process. It's a choice, but still a process. But you're waiting for your feelings to align with that process. Well, you will stay there and then bitterness will go really deep into your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart above all things. Because out of it springs the issues. Springs. What is springs? It's, it's what we create. It's what we plant. The Bible says that we're going to eat out of the fruit of our mouth. And we literally, you can see whatever we eat, we look. Our fruit is evident sometimes, right? And so what, what are you feeding yourself? Are you walking in the truth of God or are you still blinded by resentment? I want to tell you, get rid of secret resentments. Take them to God. Because maybe this person didn't mean to hurt you. And it's wrong. I think it's wrong to go to tell somebody, you know, I was mad at you. And the person doesn't even know what you've done. That's not what we're talking about. No, you go to God and you tell him, Father, this is what happened to me. And, and he, he says that he's close to the brokenhearted. But we as a church, if we want to win the world, we can't be those kind of people. We need to sow seeds of righteousness. You know what's righteousness? is to forgive. is to walk in mercy. is to walk in grace. It's to extend it and give it. Because the Bible says that out of the fullness, Jesus out of his fullness, he gave us. So what are we giving people? Out of what fullness? What do we have inside? Are we hurt? Are we all these things? Is that what we're giving? A, a, a little taste of heaven or a little taste of what? The Bible says, see and taste that the Lord is good. People are only going to taste God through you. People are only going to see God through you and I. And that's why we cannot lose our flavor. We cannot lose it. We cannot lose our peace. We need to pursue, pursue peace, pursue peace. We represent you, our minister of reconciliation. That's what the Bible says. Not just pastor, all of you, if you're a son and daughter of God, you are a minister of reconciliation. So how can we reconcile if there is so much disagreement inside of us, so much hurt? How can we reconcile that if we can even reconcile with God? But this message is a message of love. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.